Hi guys, it is a dark and stormy day, I believe the last day of winter here in the great state of Texas here, uh, here on Collapse Chronicles, and my name is Sam Mitchell, and as you probably know this week, we are having a special feature, the Coronavirus Chronicles, where I am talking to about two dozen people from all over the planet. Uh, to get their input on what they see developing with this coronavirus and what the knock-on effects could be to our global industrial civilization. And as part of this, I have the very great honor of bringing back on to uh, Collapse Chronicles none other than Ugo Barty. If you are not familiar with Ugo's work, uh, we're going to get the viewpoint from someone in the Club of Rome, and Ugo is probably best known for his Seneca Cliff description of the rapid, uh, the, the rapid collapse of global industrial civilization. So we're going to go to the locked down country of Italy for the one and only interview I'm going to have from Italy uh, in this series. So Ugo Bardi, come on and say hi to the folks, and we are going to get right into this. Hello everybody. Hello from the center of the infection. Hello from the front line of the battle. It is uh, the country of Italy. And, and, and obviously we're going to get uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of news directly from Italy. Uh, but before we do, a, a few questions just to get us into this. And this is like the overarching uh, essay question of this exam, uh, Ugo. So do you believe uh, that the coronavirus, could this be the trigger for the beginning of the end of the collapse of global industrial civilization? And why or why not? In short, it could be, but we will know that only after the storm has passed, we will look in the rear mirror and see whether the coronavirus was really the factor that brought down or really started a collapse, which is basically predicted by all the models we have, all the quantitative models we have. They tell us that the system is unstable, and in the, in the situation it is now, the same current level of production and then consuming and uh, pollution and everything is unstable. So at some moment, probably in the near future, it's going to start collapsing. Collapse doesn't mean um, destruction of everything, it means rapid decline. In a few tens of years, we will be down to levels of 50, 100 years ago, if nothing changes. So um, the coronavirus could be the trigger that pushes the system down the cliff, but we cannot say yet. In my personal opinion, there is a chance, but perhaps it, it will not be so bad to cause in itself this collapse. Okay, so where would you place the threat of coronavirus on the list of threats against civilization today? Is it top, the bottom, nowhere on the list, or just one of the many bullets in the chamber? Somewhere high, because the reaction to the coronavirus has been very um, strong. People are very worried, especially here in Italy. If you look at the statistics, it is not such a dire threat. It's not, uh, I mean, in Italy, the extrapolations tell us we will have about 5,000 victims if things keep going the way they're going. Of course, of course nobody wants to be a victim, but uh, over um, a total people who die in Italy, every year we have about 650,000 people dying in Italy for all the possible reasons. If we have 50,000, 5,000 casualties, victims of the virus, it doesn't even show on the curve. So it's not in itself a terrible threat. Problem is, 
the economic consequences. Exactly. Not that was so my next question. Of the virus yeah. itself, yeah. but for the perception of the virus. And you know the story of the straw that broke the camel's back. Now it was not the fault of the straw that the camel back was broken, it's because the camel was overloaded already. Yeah. So it takes really very little to send the system to tumble down. It could be, but uh, I I was afraid more of things like a major war, and I didn't think that the virus could do so much disruption. But apparently it is. I think in a few months it will be over, but I may be wrong. So I'm, I'm I'm surprised to hear you say that. I think you're the, you're the first person who go. Uh, who has agreed uh, with me? Now, you've been studying the collapse of global industrial civilization for a lot longer than I have. I've only been studying mm -hmm. it for 10 years. And, and brother, I, I have to admit, my head spun around. Uh, what has literally, uh, what I have seen unfolding right here in Texas in, in the past week, from what I considered compared to relative to what you and I and people down here in this rabbit hole have been talking about, a fairly minor stimulus, the, the response. Uh, my, my head is spun around. So you have, you have been somewhat taken uh, by surprise of how this has spun out of control as quickly as it has? It has surprised everybody. It took a little, uh, some time to react. I think right now we are somewhat overreacting a little. The threat is there, but uh, but the system is really is really really stopped. Everything has ground down to a stop. There is no movement, no people, no shops, no commerce. No, it's a, it's an economic disaster. Uh, still, I think in itself, uh, I think we will lose uh, the prediction, uh, the, the calculation I saw speak about about 20 percent loss of the gross domestic product of Italy. And probably in, in the US it will not be so, so much different unless, uh, unless uh, people take it more seriously than we are. It, it is, it is, here it is very ordered, everybody doing their duty, um, people stay home, um, there is, and, uh, and there is an effort to do it together. And so I think we can make it, losing 20% for for um, six months, it's survivable, maybe. And so it's uh, it's difficult to say if it will be real the end of civilization. I think we are moving in that direction, but we are moving in this end of civilization is something very slow. Even in our case, in our modern civilization, things move fast, very fast. But if you think of things like the Roman Empire, then you would ask to a Roman, they, they, they didn't perceive that the civilization was collapsing because it took a few centuries to collapse. Now we can see that from our time, or well, you could see the curse of the Roman Empire going down. In our case, we're discussing about decades, not centuries, but still it is difficult to perceive. It um, um, will take some time to start really sliding down. So far, we're on the brink of collapse, and I think we'll stay there for a little while longer. With, with or without coronavirus. Well, you, you actually, uh, I guess, answered my fourth question. Uh, do you think the reaction, well, I want you to address Italy since I've, yeah, uh, I've had other, I, so many people from the U.S. Do you think the reaction, I'm talking about the official government reaction at this point, then we're going to talk about the public reaction. The government reaction uh, that you're seeing with the lockdowns and the quarantines and shutdown of businesses and whatnot, do you think that reaction to this level of threat is overblown? Do you think it's not strong enough? Or do you think it's about right? Well, what I can say in Italy right now, it is about right. But I think there is a tendency to overreacting because governments are always tempted to take power when they are challenged. There is, a, there is a challenge, so we take everything under control. They do that. So it is going to be seen how 
this excessive control of the government. We want to know a lot of good things about what we do, where we have been, whom we speak with, and all these kind of things. So far, not so terrible. And we're going to see what's going to happen in the United States, the land of the free, the home of the brave. And uh, what is your government going to do? I don't know. It is very interesting. So far, the American government has been underreacting, but it may well be overreacting in the future. Well, I just got a an email, guys, and, and uh, I, I am not necessarily, I, I do not discount this. Uh, uh, I, I, I have no idea. I have an email from a man who I have met who is not a right-wing conspiracy theorist wacko saying his sister's husband works in FEMA and he just got a, a, an urgent message from his sister that FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is considering, or is, they said planning, to shut down the gas stations across the United States of America. If that happens, Mad Max is here. Would you agree if FEMA does something like that? Yes, that we will see Mad Max. I think it's going to pose a lot of problems. On the other hand, what I was reading um, on the web is that, uh, you know, people here are queuing in front of supermarkets to buy um, toilet paper. Yeah. Okay. In the U.S., I read, and I don't know if it is true, are queuing to buy guns. Oh, true? yeah, in Texas. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They talk about shutting down the gas stations in Texas. You're going to yeah. see some lines at, at gun shops. So anyway, I am so thrilled that uh, finally I, I hear I have a guest who even wants to wade in. It's, it's, this is the third rail of the coronavirus uh, story. I am simply opening this debate up, but just by going here, I'm, you know, I'm being accused of turning Collapse Chronicles into the Alex Jones channel. But let me ask you the most dangerous subversive question on my list. Do you believe that the level of threat being presented to the public by coronavirus trumps our civil rights, whether in Italy or the U.S., should the government be given the power to curtail such basic freedoms as our freedom of assembly, which has certainly been curtailed, our freedom of movement, shall we say, shutting down the gas stations, uh, so on and so forth, or do you think that this decision to react to the level of threat should be left up to individuals to decide for themselves uh, how they want to alter their own lifestyles in accordance with their uh, feelings. I see, I see your question, Sam. It's uh, what I can tell you. I don't know what the government should do, but I know what the government is doing in Italy. And the government is doing exactly what you said, is curtailing your civil rights. If in Italy right now, if you, if a policeman finds you in the street walking without a justification, you have to have a piece of paper that you sign and you declare, I am walking now to go to this place, from this place, and I go there for this reason. And if you don't have that paper, you are fined, and you may go to jail, actually. So you see, the government is taking a very strong stance on this. It's very, very act, reactive, proactive, and you would, but the interesting thing is that people here, they agree. By all means, you look at the social media, they say, if I go in the street without a paper and I get arrested, everybody agrees that I am a criminal. And uh, because the government is doing this in a clever way, and the people are so scared of the threat of the coronavirus, that they react by demonizing the people who disobey yeah. the orders of the government, which is typical. It's of very typical. Yeah. I don't know if in the United States the same will happen. Exactly. It's exactly what. So, how do you feel about that? I beg your pardon? How do you feel about that? 
I would I feel bad, but I cannot do anything about that. I think I'm not very happy about this because it could very well be not just a momentary um, necessity, but a trend for the future. And uh, to limit your personal freedom of movement, your personal um, ability of maintaining your privacy, uh, but uh, there is not much that you can do right now. Honestly, if you if you state that you disagree, um, I mean, you, you risk to be attacked very strongly on the social media. You have to be careful because the nation, it's a certain general feeling. The general feeling is that now everybody must stay home. And if you walk away from home, you are a criminal. Yeah, I have been more attacked on social media in the last week, Ugo, for just mm -hmm opening this question up to debate just, just just sticking my little toe in it i have been more viciously attacked by uh by by people cheering on the police state nobody wants to hear me even mention the notion that this is a balancing act. There, there's no, uh, uh, there, there's no exit strategy. As someone I was interviewing yesterday, if, if this was for for three weeks, you know, and we knew it was going to come to an end, and it would be one thing. But we we have no idea how long it's going to go on. Is it safe mm -hmm. to say? that the the police state, the surveillance state, and fascism in general is going to be in a stronger position at the end of this crisis than it is already. Probably. I would, I would agree with that. And, uh, okay, so let's, let, let's just talk about this more. I, 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 instead of the general, the, the government reaction, let's just talk about the general reaction of of, uh, as I say, I live in Texas, which is probably one of the more reactionary places of anywhere on the planet to see what happens when an entire population is thrown into panic. But do you consider what you're, what you're seeing, and I'm talking about from the, from the general public, not from the government uh, controlling them, do you agree with me that this is a snapshot into the future as more and more of these type events start unfolding and more and more people start un realizing that this is no longer the planet that it was a few years ago, that th this is only going to ramp up? Yeah, by all means, I think this is a... Um big change that we're seeing and that we will see just uh, many things are going to to move in a direction in which they were already moving for instance think of shops i mean people uh, use now to buy most of what they need from um, retail not retailers from people like amazon or this kind of thing you have all, everything delivered to you but you also still have shops along the street but this coronavirus has been a terrible blow to all retailers because now everything you need to buy you have to stay online because you cannot enter in the shop more than one person more than one person cannot enter in the shop so you prefer to buy things from Amazon and so a lot of people are going to close the shops this is a big change a big social change because it's, it will happen everywhere. Everywhere, I think, everywhere in the world you have Amazon right now. And so they are going to take over the supply of almost everything. That's what will be a one big change. Then, from my viewpoint, we have, for instance, we, our students. Uh, I am a university professor, but we don't teach anymore to our students in class. We teach to them, they teach them in by computer, in yeah. virtual. And I think that's going to stay. So that's also a big change. But in general, the use of computers, of virtual transmission, more things will be networked, more things will be virtual, will also be a tremendous change in the organization of society. Because it is really, if everything is recorded, 
like a lesson that I give to my student in class, my lesson is not recorded. I give it in, on the web. It is recorded. Yeah. So what I say is known. It is known what I buy. It is known who my contact. It is known. Uh, it is known that I am speaking to you now. And so society is going to be more networked. And that may, within some limits, it may be good because it will be more transparent. You know what the others, you would not want everybody to know what you are doing, but you have a chance to know better what the <laughs> so others are doing. Now. <laughs> and so what your bureaucrats, what they are doing, why they are okay, right now you don't know, but if they are operating mainly, mainly on the web, then in principle, you can know what they are doing. You see? Yeah. And, you're, uh... and so this could be a very, very big change. So, what is your your take on a lot a lot of people that I've been interviewing? I, I've been somewhat surprised, to be honest, are are sharing the opinion that there that there is a silver lining in this cloud that we are that because of the coronavirus, we are going to have a critical mass of people awakening. And realizing that uh, we're comporting ourselves wrong on this planet, and we're actually going to learn a lesson from the coronavirus and voluntarily start treading more lightly on the planet. Uh, do you accept or reject that notion? Personally, I, I disagree. I think people will not <laughs> learn so much from this. They will, they will learn that they have to surrender some of their personal freedom to the government because of fighting the coronavirus. But as soon as they will have a chance, even a small chance, to go back to the old ways, they will. That's exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you, you and I, I, I think, Hugo, I, I have to say, uh, of all the people, uh, you're, you're, I think, the 22nd person I've interviewed, you, you and I are, are more in line than, than any guest I've had. Uh, so I do appreciate that. So as long as we're agreeing, uh, two more questions. This one, this one is probably a no-brainer. Hugo, do, do you see... Uh, relative to re relative to the coronavirus, the level of threat to uh, civilization, uh, do you see much bigger threats coming on to the horizon uh, in, in the near? By all means, by all means, um, the coronavirus is nothing in comparison to climate change. That's real bad. Climate change is. Horrible. Climate change is a thousand times more dangerous than the coronavirus. Right now, it is not very politically correct to say this. If you say this, okay, uh, and, and I don't think anyway we have to bicker about uh, why I was right. You see, the coronavirus shows that I was right in what I was saying, you see, because it is like climate change just faster. It's, it's the way things are. Coronavirus is a big bump in our trajectory, but not the destruction of everything. Climate change is so bad that it could truly destroy civilization and go all the way to the extinction of the human species. That's a threat. But, but I don't see after the last IPCC report, I don't remember a run on toilet paper. Uh, I don't remember a run on toilet paper from the last Arctic ice melting report, from the methane bomb, from the sixth mass extinction. I don't remember uh, the bushmeat trade uh, sending people to, you know, to buy out every bag of rice in every supermarket in the state of Texas. It's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, I, it's I don't think this opinion of mine is very popular in Texas. Yes. Uh, no! I uh, neither is mine, but anyway, we are 24 minutes into this, so the, the, the final question, we, we've been talking about humans for 24 minutes. If uh, we were a couple of uh, bonobos uh, sitting around uh, tuning in to uh, CNN right now, what would this conversation sound like? What do the rest of our fellow Earthlings uh, see in this crisis of humanity? 
Um, I'm not sure I understand your question, Sam. Can you rephrase it? Uh, yeah, is there, is, is there a benefit to earthlings who are not humans from the coronavirus? Uh, okay, I see what you mean. You mean. Mm. I don't know. This depends what you mean as benefit. You see, you, these things happen because they have to happen. The coronavirus is a, is a reaction to a high concentration of a, a single species. So the virus finds this uh, food. We are food for the virus. And so they, they go and they, they enjoy the abundance. <laughs> but this virus in itself... Um, it's uh, it's not destroying humankind. This virus will not do that. Even the great viruses of the past, the big plagues of uh, the the Black Death, you know, they didn't destroy the humankind. And, and so I think we will survive that. I don't think we will learn much from this. It will be a pause that could be useful for maybe we have a chance to rethink, but. I, I I think I would be optimistic if we if we were to say that it is a good chance. It is it is part of a, of a movement of an, an evolution that goes in a in a certain way, and it's taking us somewhere, and it will take us to that place, even though we don't know exactly what kind of place it is. Okay, and with that, Ugo Bardi, we're gonna have to wrap up, uh, and. Guys, if you enjoyed what uh, Ugo Bardi had to share with us, please spend a few seconds upvoting this video and do subscribe when you're over here. And look forward to several more of these, and about three more days of these interviews coming out. But Ugo Bardi, we really appreciate you taking this time out of your busy schedule and this crazy time on the planet. But most importantly, we appreciate your lifetime of fighting the good fight. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye, guys.